Hello, everyone, and welcome to week four of the MSK Unknown Case Series. This is a great case. I'm really excited about this case, so let's dive right into it. This is a 66-year-old female presenting with chronic right shoulder pain. Here we have actually an ultrasound image, an ultrasound image of the right shoulder. And some of you may not be familiar with uh, musculoskeletal ultrasound, but this is a very, a very effective way to evaluate the shoulder and particularly the rotator cuff. And here we have an image of the part of the rotator cuff here on this alt diagnostic ultrasound image. So before I get into it, I just wanna to explain to you some of the anatomy that we're seeing here. So this is a transverse view of the shoulder and we're looking at the supraspinatus tendon, which is one of the four rotator cuff tendons. Um, and this tendon attaches to the greater tuberosity of the humerus and starting most superficial to deep. So right here, this is superficial. Right here, this is the uh, subcutaneous fat here. This layer here from here to here is a subcutaneous fat along the shoulder. And then the second layer from here to here with these hypoechoic dark areas with more hyperechoic, brighter uh, fibroconnective tissue, this is the deltoid muscle. So here we, starting here, we have the subcutaneous fat, then we have the deltoid muscle. And then this bright hyperechoic or, you know, bright line here is the peribursal fat. And there can be a potential space here if there's fluid here. And that space can, be the subacromial cell deltoid bursa. So if, you know, if there's inflammation around the shoulder, this peribursal fat can expand and result in fluid in the subacromial cell deltoid bursa. Then this layer here that's hyperechoic, um, these bands are actually the supraspinatus tendon. So this is part of the supraspinatus tendon right here. And this is the supraspinatus tendon here. And then this bright hyperechoic line with posterior acoustic shadowing or dark um, signal, you know, posterior to it, this is the humeral cortex or the bone, the humeral shaft and the humeral cortex. And then because of the shadowing from the bone, from the dense bone, we get loss of uh, ultrasound, um, uh, ultrasound sound or ultrasound uh, signal, I should say. So what we see here is, notice that the supraspinatus super tendon, there's a complete defect in the tendon because we have some of the tendon fibers that are here and then some of the tendon fibers that are here. And we have this large anechoic defect in the tendon, okay? In fact, these tendon fibers have been retracted. And if you take a look, the, the tear of this supraspinatus involves the entire thickness of the tendon because it goes all the way from the articular surface, from the humeral head, all the way to the very bursal fat or the bursal surface. So this in fact is a full thickness rotator cuff tear. This is a nice example of what a full thickness rotator cuff tear would look like on ultrasound. And I just want to show you guys, you know, these images, these two specific images were taken from John Jacobson's book, Fundamentals of Musculoskeletal Ultrasound. Please check it out. It's a great book. He's a great educator. But typically, we have the patient in the crass position, or we put the forearm behind the patient's back, and we put the ultrasound probe right here, kind of anteriorly along the shoulder, um, towards the periphery of, um, of the shoulder here. And this is the image we get. And this is what a normal shoulder ultrasound should look like. We have the subcutaneous fat right here. We have the deltoid muscle, which is the second layer. And then we have the peribursal fat, no fluid in the subacromial cell deltoid bursa. And all these hyperechoic fibrillar, uh, this fibrillar structure here is a supraspinatus tendon. And then here we have, you know, of course, the humeral, the humerus. And then this area right here is the greater tuberosity where these tendon fibers are inserting onto. So right here, this here is the greater tuberosity of the humerus. And all of these hyperechoic fibrillar uh, bands or fibers of the tendon are inserting right here onto the greater tuberosity. So notice that there's no anechoic or dark defect here in the tendon to, to suggest a tear, either a partial tear or a full thickness tear. So that's the normal structure. Now, if we come back to our uh, image, and this is the normal image, we can see that there's a full thickness rotator cuff tear. There's a complete anechoic defect extending from the articular surface all the way to the bursal surface or from the humeral head all the way to the peribursal fat. Okay, we do not see that anechoic defect in the normal image here on the right. And also illustrated on this is a very important sign called the cartilage interface sign. So notice here, because there's a full thickness defect, we can actually see part of the hyaline articular cartilage here, or this dark area, this hypochoic area right above the humeral head. Normally, we should never see the articular cartilage. Like for example, here, we don't see the articular cartilage. Here, we don't see the articular cartilage, but we do see it here. And this is called a cartilage interface sign. This is a sign that tells us that there's a rotator cuff tear. And the reason why we see that is because of the ultrasound properties, right? We have, remember that a simple cyst, you have, because when there's fluid, 
it's anechoic and there's posterior through transmission because of the fluid there. And the same is true here because we have fluid, we have an anechoic defect. And because we have anechoic fluid here, we have posterior through transmission that now allows us to see the hyaline cartilage. So this is a nice example of what the cartilage interface sign is and how it's seen in rotator cuff tears. This is just the MRI correlate to the same exact patient, the same exact case where, you know, this here is a supraspinatus muscle. This dark black hypointense line is the myotendinous junction. And the supraspinatus tendon should be nice and black or dark on all sequences. It should go all the way here to the greater tuberosity, but there's fluid here. In fact, it's extending from the articular surface all the way to the bursal surface. So this is a nice example of what a full thickness rotator cuff tear would look like on an MR. Um, the same exact patient's ultrasound and MRI exam. So I hope that was helpful. A nice case of an ultrasound example of a full thickness rotator cuff tear. Uh, please join us next week. We'll have an awesome case again for week five. Um, hope this is beneficial. If you like this, please share this. Um, we want education to be free for everyone all around the world. Thank you so much.